This is how it starts out, which is just... This is tough. This is how it starts out, which is okay. just... It's, it's tough. It takes me a while to come anyway. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of KMS Reloaded. We have a lot to get to this week. This week is the Chronicle of Blind Michael Geary. Blind Mike was in the center of a lot of controversy, a lot of sensitivity in the studio this week. Like I said, we have a lot to get to. So let's jump right in. We got Justin and Coleman behind the dish from now on. So I don't think it's it's kind of pointless for me to mention that. But uh, And we also got Mike and Gus in studio. Kirk Manhattan show is like no other. We all know that. We fire a guy, we bring him in, and we just do a full <laughs> autopsy on Monday. <him. laughs> And then Mike starts off the show just taking some shots at Mick. I would say to Mick, if you play your card, like, don't be a fucking idiot about How it. How he's capable of that. Do, like, do his podcast consistently, contribute to the network, be around, yeah. fill in. I heard him say something on that live stream where someone asked, like, will you still fill in? He's like, I mean... I don't really want to. Like, I, I won't love it, but right. I'll do it. Right. Don't come in with that attitude. Do it because that could leave. If Justin leaves in a or year, Coleman, or Coleman or, leaves in uh, three be, months, right. <laughs> then, then Mick could be the guy. And this bully, because that's what Mike is. I love him, but he's a bully. This bully is not slowing down. This freight train is just fucking keep plugging along. Um, and then he sets his sights on just the, the fucking poor, innocent Gus. I mean, is there anyone more innocent than Gus? Because I think Coleman, no offense, Gus, I think Coleman's now working with someone who's good at their job. So mm -hmm. it'll be easier for Coleman. I mean, yes, if Coleman fucks up, now the blame will be more on Coleman. But I think his Coleman's responsibilities are people, less now. I supposed to be basically Justin's like my son almost, like in a way. Like, is there like that thing where Coleman's going to, I won't be as tough on Justin because now I know Justin's on. I think you might be tougher on Justin. I, I think Justin's like, I don't think Justin can handle it though. We'll, f we'll find out. We'll see. I, mean, I don't, don't fucking know, dude. <laughs> don't, don't fuck up. <laughs> fucking Justin. Uh, no one is safe from the wrath of Michael Gary. Not even uh, uh, the fucking ball gag Coleman. Even he is not safe from Michael Gary. I like Coleman. I think they could be a good dynamic. Uh oh. Do you need Coleman? Yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> oh, might be yes. time. Might be time for him. Yes. <laughs> we need Coleman. And again, the man is out of control. Um, and once he's tasted blood from the other victims in the studio he goes back to his main victim that's what's frustrating about mick is he's fe he feels he's owed so it's a very entitled attitude he kind yeah. of displays which why would he be owed more than montante or john from scranton or fucking i appreciate everybody tommy work. quinlan or any of these right. guys i'm telling him to like change his attitude don't, don't think that it's like a, a step down for him to fill in here we'll sage advice. step up because what else is he doing like is he filling in on other podcasts or doing something that we don't know about that he has these massive opportunities like if he wants to be in this world and he says specifically the show mm -hmm. then filling in should be an honor to him i agree all right so the guys talk about a bunch of other stuff and i know i said i want to stick to mike so we can get to the juicy bits but um i thought this was pretty funny uh so they bring up the fact that um they shot Justin's announcement of being the producer, how they shot the video and, and stuff like that. And then uh, someone gives their take on it. Where I know, I know you said uh, things aren't really planned out on this show, but John kind of took it to the next level. John from Trenton. Like in that video, like in that video, I could see that's when Justin found out. Like I, legit. That's a, Justin's not a very planned person. He kind of goes with the flow. Hold on. The video we did yesterday. <laughs> yes. He thought I was cleaning. There's no way he thought that. Is he a fucking idiot? <laughs> I know he's a crackhead, but what the hell is he? What? <laughs> uh, why? Well, what? Well, normally. So Coleman just happened to be filming yep. him? <laughs> well, <laughs> Mike, I just happened to randomly be here, look at my phone and say, oh, well. Out Thanks, loud. Gus. Yeah, I'm always talking out loud, as you Do know. Do I hire Dale Bear? <laughs> when would this be? Like, when would this be during the day? What is he a fucking retard? What is he talking about? Only only in this world that Kirk has created. But, uh, so that's it for this episode. Like I said, want to keep it quick so we can get to the good stuff. Um, <clears throat> and then we move on to January 16th. We got um, Mike in studio again. Redundant Justin and Coleman behind the dish. Uh, let's see, how does it start? Oh yeah, massive technical issues to start this episode. Um, you know, Coleman and Justin still haven't figured out Justin's microphone. 
Justin is now eventually to the point where he's on like a fucking karaoke mic. Like he's at the, some Chinese food place on like a Thursday night or something. Um, it's crazy to me that they still haven't figured it out. Kind of reeks of Gus sabotage. Um, and if it is, kudos to Gus, that's amazing. I don't think Mick would be that smart to do something like that. So Gus, good job on the sabotage. Uh, I don't think they'll ever figure it out. It's kind of crazy that Steve Robinson so far has been the only technical producer of the Kirk Minahan Studios, as I'm just getting smoked out. <coughs> oh, Jesus Christ. The fuck? Oh, I just almost died. Whew. But yeah, so Steve Robinson's the only fucking technical producer we've ever had at KMS Studios. Um, Dave Colony was not a competent producer, uh, not even in the least bit. When we went to the uh, John Stewart Memorial at Girl in the Hill, I went there early to help Dave set up the stuff. And Dave had a brand new piece of equipment that he's never used before that um, he didn't really know how to set up. He actually asked me if I knew how to set it up, which goes to show you fucking exactly where the fuck he was. Um, and then anyone who was at Girl in the Hill knows there was a giant humming sound the whole time Kirk was talking. And uh, eventually when Dave was there, he got to the point where he was like, yeah, this is as good as it's gonna sound, so people are just gonna have to deal with it. And I, I couldn't believe he fucking said that. But you know, I, that's, that's kind of the producers that Kirk Minahan's show has had. Um, so this is just more par for the course, honestly. So this isn't microlated, but um, this is pretty funny. Montante's on a podcast and he's talking about not getting the producer job again from Kirk. And I was like, oh shit, I was like, I think the Eminem boys, because the Eminem boys, by itself, it's a fucking brilliant idea. It works. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> it's really not a. It's a brilliant idea. Secondly, these people think they're owed things. That's the like part. Montante, that I like Montante. Is, is he in Thursday? Do we know yet or no? He said he'll let me know by noon. Okay. Mick is good to go, though. You're not owed a goddamn thing. Not one fucking thing. Not, you know. You know what my dad used to say? You can't say this anymore. My dad used to say to me, you're going to do two things in your life. You get two things are promised to you. You're going to stay white and you're going to die. So we learn or confirm, I guess would be more appropriate, that Kirk's dad was uh, low-key racist, which, you know, is man was raised in a different time whatever but i kind of don't blame the guy the whole moss dudley situation it was probably a lot to be self-conscious about but whatever give the guy a pass different you know he's raised in a different time um so then montante audio keeps getting played and then kirk finally eventually just fucking has enough of it what has montante done what has he done i appreciate him coming here and doing the show what has he done he like offered to do a job part-time and did nothing to like show he could do it just like the time before, he didn't do anything. Like, I like him when he's in the show. He's a good guy. As a matter of fact, I called this fucking guy. He says that on there, yeah. Called him. And I was like, hey, like, I like you and Mick. I want you guys. Like, in a perfect world, everybody work for me. It'd be in a perfect world, I'd have eight people working on the show. Ten people. That's not how it works. And I said, well, I bet you guys, if you, we can try and figure something out. Like, I want, I want this to happen. And now he's bitching. Like, fuck that. And he said he's talking. He's like, he's like, oh, yeah, Julie and I are talking about putting together a show in New Jersey together. He said this to me on the phone the other day. First of all, that twat can go pound sand. <laughs> you know, it's like, and Montante too. Get the fuck out of here. People are just jealous and, you know, it's really easy to get jealous and bitter in this little world that Kirk's created. Um, you know, Mike is someone that showed kind of the right way to do it. Uh, do your own thing. Get some free advertisement. Kind of leech off of Minahan's fucking viewership. Not to say that Mike hasn't earned it. Like, I, Why You Laughing is genuinely one of my favorite podcasts. It's a really good show. Um, fucking karma for saying that. Jesus Christ. Smoke me out again. <laughs> Every time I lie, I get smoked out. <coughs> but Mike kind of did the blueprint as to... <laughs> Mike kind of has the blueprint on how to do the show. It's not a handout. Montante is a Republican. He's a fucking handout guy. He's a big liberal. He wants me to give him money to do nothing. He's a big, fat, liberal cunt. You're and that's so not Kirky Bits. Go fuck yourself. Seriously. Come in here Thursday and beg for forgiveness or get the fuck out of here. The only thing left for Montante at this point, and who knows, maybe at the time of this recording, last night was the subway thing. Maybe Montante did kiss the ring. 
But that's the only thing left Montante really has to do is just, just kiss the ring and kind of just move on. I like Montante on the show, so I, I hope he doesn't fucking sink and burn like a lot of these other people do. Hold on, breaking news. Now we're talking on Twitter. Now we're talking on Twitter. Is it forced? Sure. Did I retweet it? Yes. At Beyond Average Mick. It's impressive how much of a moron at Blind Mike, you got, you got tagged, Mike, <laughs> okay. has been lately. I could scream till I'm blue in the face about it, but ignore my words and continue this narrative. Enough <laughs> what of this am I lecture. Ignoring, Nick? Mick. Mike, may I finish the tweet? I'm sorry. That's fine. Enough of the lecturing from this fucking asshole. <laughs> Who the hell is he without Kirk or KMS? Fuck you, buddy. Well, that's my point, Mick. <laughs> is that I'm on the show. I'm a nobody team, that, team that is on the show. Maybe I have a little Mick wisdom to impart to you. Yeah. Justin <laughs> T. Mick on this one. Oh, of course. Yeah. So then Justin starts his little pig piling maneuver here. Um, he starts reading some shit online from the Mick versus Mike debate. And of course, Mike gets triggered, as he is one to do. The fans are speaking out against uh, against Mike. Oh, good. I'm fine. <laughs> what the hell? Mike is right. Mike is terrific on the show and seems like a great guy, but the idea that he should be giving out advice is laughable. I agree with that. And then, to get on the... Where am I? I, I, agree, with, then, I, agree, with, I agree with some of that. Where am I right now? I agree with, I agree with some of that. <laughs> and then this guy, who I'm pretty sure is a either a Mike Burner and an Alba Burner, Tom from Michigan, he pretends to give some... How would it be? I'm here. I don't know. And then Ted Sarandis goes, agreed. I signed up for his Patreon very early to support him. I never listen to it anymore, and neither do the vast majority of the subscribers. <laughs> right. Glad he is doing well and making we're, a name for himself in the comedy world. From. But he comes off like a dick when speaking down to me. Those are bought. Those listeners are. But we know, we all understand that. That's fine. I'm buying them? Yes. <laughs> this has been a real waste of money. Well, it's a weird investment. But hey, look, you, it's something you believe in. All the great geniuses. Nobody's appreciating their lifetime, Mike. I, the geniuses, you know. No money. Just promote the thing yes. that I'm sinking money into. <laughs> I would say it's 95 5 in favor of Mick, Mick right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. It's disappointing. Yeah. It's to me not enough. And knowing he's eventually going to break Mike a little bit, he just can't wait to read more. The last few weeks of the blind Mike giving his thoughts and criticism of the Gus situation is laughable. <laughs> I've never understood. <laughs> Who is this, by the way? <laughs> this is uh, Trevor. Let me Trevor. Let me get the handle on the phone. Very hurtful. At Chico four one one seven. Chico C H I C O. Retweet uh -huh. this man. Four one one seven. Four one one seven. Yes. Oh, there's Trevor. He follows me. He's got fourteen followers. He's actually really good on Twitter. Um, <laughs> I've never understood his appeal on the show. The guy's whole career is based off commenting slash criticizing other people's work. Well, that's we just, all saw that's his, just an accurate. I think that's my bio. We all. This is, this is actually a great point. No one's brought up yet. We all saw his stand up routine at the live show, and yet you're criticizing me. <laughs> I didn't criticize a stand up. <laughs> I'll quote tweet this plus one million. Oh, why are you doing this? I mean, well, I mean, Trevor. Well, it's just the people. Yeah, Trevor. I mean, he's, my, what, but he's, he's endorsing it. No, 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 no. You're supposed to shit on Trevor? You said plus one million. What does that mean? So, so is that long. endorsement? I think so. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Let me retweet that just what so it's clear. It, I'll retweet myself. I often do that. <laughs> and you know, these are getting to him, which is absolutely wonderful. Hey, Mike. How you doing? Hello. What do you want? <laughs> Listen, I I'm not even a Mick guy, but I gotta defend him a little bit. Sure, yeah. We're, we're take You're so fucking quick to do. hold on, hold on, caller. Everyone, no, everyone, I everyone, just... everyone, shut up, caller. Take I all imagine the, the floor is yours. Take all <laughs> the time you want. Take all the time you want. And again, it's like, you're so quick to fucking dunk on Gus and Mick, but like, you're the one who's cried to Kirk about just everything you don't want anyone picking on you on the show Mike, shut it's up. Like, Go ahead. Yep. you have no problem doing it to everybody else uh, the irony right. is thick and it's my like, friend the show is actually is what it really is and the show was actually pretty good when everybody was fucking making fun of you every day like yeah. steve was in on it and oh, I, agree. I just think you're but, a hypocrite and now, the show, <laughs> and now the show stinks because mike's a pussy we all agree i but, what, what can don't you, do? you think that i've learned from some of my own mistakes and i saw that stuff in gus like, I said how many times that I sympathized. With, like, I couldn't have sat here and took the shit that he took. You're not going to respond to me now as I defend myself. I'll, I, I'll concede. I'll digress. No. <laughs> I, what, I mean, the thing you and Gus have in common is you guys fucking bomb on the show, like, every day. So it's like, <laughs> I mean, that's really what you guys. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. And as it said many times on this show, very, very hurtful. Um, very hurtful. But after that, it is on to the main event. So now we are on to January 17th with Mick versus Blind Mike. And uh, let's see. Yeah, we get right into it. I think that you think that I, I have earned too much here, around here. And you think that I 
believe that I'm no. somewhere that I'm not. You're incorrect. Go I don't ahead, think you've mind. earned too much. I don't think you've earned anything. Do you, you think that I believe that I, I like? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting. Yeah. You think that I'm almost entitled to it? Yes. I don't think you've earned a paycheck. That, I think that, if you did, you'd be back there. I think if you showed that you were better than those two guys, right, you'd you, be back. There. You continuously you say disagree that with though. Mick or no? I do. I do disagree with that. But I'm you not, think, I'm you not think, calling for their job though. You think you deserve a paycheck? Not to for being you here. I'm if, I produ- if I produced here, yeah, okay, that, that's all sure. it is. Yeah. <laughs> Mick, I don't think I ever said that if you produced here, you shouldn't be paid. You know, Mick left the show running, and it, it's crazy to me that Kirk doesn't really give a shit about that. <clears throat> he never really. He brings it up sometimes, but he doesn't really care about that. It's more Mick's attitude than anything else. If you fill in. And you don't ask for a paycheck, that's what happens. You're filling in. Yes. If you say, hey, Kirk, I need gas money. I'm losing a day of work to I, come I, in here. But I don't want do, that. Do I have a problem with that? I don't think so. I don't, I don't want that, though. I don't have. I don't well, have... then don't do it, Mick. Don't take the opportunity that's given to you. If you don't want to fill in, don't fucking Mike, fill in. I don't in. want your advice. I, How's that sound? I, I don't, don't give, give a, a shit about what hey, you're telling Mick. me, dude. I really, I could care less. Hey, you, Mick, you, you, you act like you're I'm some not, high horse, hey, dude. Mick, all you ever, no, I'm not going to shut up, Mike. I'm not I don't giving care. you advice, I, asshole. That's all you've been I'm doing. I'm giving my opinion on the show. That doesn't what it sounds like, Mike. I've never called you. That's not what it sounds like, I don't give a fuck about you. can play the clips, Mike. That's not how it sounds. I hope you keep fucking up. Keep losing the opportunities. I don't give a fuck. You've been saying the you, you, you've been rooting against you're me you're an an the entire time. Cocksucker. Why am I ungrateful? You're an ungrateful asshole. For you, I don't, have any, I don't owe you anything, Mike. He, Nothing. He gave you an opportunity last week. You cried like a baby and stormed out of here. But why did I do that, Mike? I don't know, because you're an idiot. I don't think Mike has been more right about anything in his whole fucking life. And if you haven't noticed yet, that fucking fat, big titty queer fucking Coleman it's just been giggling this whole episode. Let's let's go back to Mick's sound. I want to hear some more from from these two guys. Because there is like don't. Well, put, it's because I don't oh, follow him on Twitter. Well, that's don't. the real problem that we we'll get to. Oh well, really? I mean, yeah, 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 I mean no, you do not follow yeah. me on any social media account. I subscribe oh, Mick, to your page. Mick, you're <laughs> a fucking you baby. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want this to become a, uh, a fucking. It is just not. No, it was I mean, all Mike, assault, Mike doesn't like me. I don't have a problem. I think, I think with Mike you, follows every single person from the producers are except for me. Is Will even alive? It's just very simple. It's, it's, it's a very clear thing. He just doesn't really mess maybe, with me. Maybe, 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 I didn't know. Maybe, fine. I'm not asking for him to do it. You stink. That's okay. Mick, well, I didn't know I didn't follow you. I mean, clearly, it's not. And I just love how just fucking Mike just steps on the throat of Mick. Just keeps his foot on the gas. It's a side of Mike we don't really see that often. And I, I kind of forgot that he can be good at it when he's... It has to be like the perfect storm for him, but in the right scenario, he, he's really good at this. I just feel personally that I've done enough to contribute here and earn a paycheck. Now, it's not my decision. I understand that, but like, I don't want to keep having that job dangled in front of me. Like, oh, you can come fill in, but like, you know, we don't know if Gus is coming back. That whole thing, that to me was a job kind of being dangled in front of me. Maybe that's, I'm wrong there, but that's are, how I felt it. That's, that's completely you are imagined. Right. Okay. Not. Like, I don't even know. Like, well, we, I mean, I can, I, can go, I can go back on Wednesday and pull the clip. So like, is the job being dangled well, in front of Montante, all the people that applied? No, they weren't here. They weren't here Mick, saying you hey, filled in two days one on one of them. You walked out and had no one. And the guy got the show. fired, Mike. Right. If you waited a fucking week, that could have been but you. I don't. Maybe I he believe, never would have asked. But Justin. that's the thing. I, I didn't believe that. That's, I guess, that's then the that's that your think, fucking problem. Mick. I guess so. I didn't believe I'd be on the Kirk Minahan show one day, right. but I tried. I kept showing up when he asked me to. So here I am. And how lucky we are. You know, there's like two versions of Mick. There's like this version, the version that left the studio, like this manic, like weirdo fucking version of Mick. And then there's the much, much, much better version that could be a producer at one point for the Kirkman Minahan show. Every time I lie and say something nice about someone that's not true, I get fucking smoked to death. I tried, Mick, I'm sorry. You're a young guy. You're 28. In two years, would that be crazy if you were if he's going to be here for four years? These two guys left. No, I'm saying don't fuck up now because right. you'll blow an opportunity. But how in the am future. I fucking it up? If with you him? don't take it, adv- how am I fucking up with Kurt? You're bitching about it constantly. But I'm not bitching about. I'm saying no, I would you're help right, him. Mick. You seemed like a real adult last or two weeks ago. You seem like a real mature guy who's got his fucking head on straight. But Mike, you seem like a guy who's grateful for all that. I was wrong. I'm sorry. It's a fucking slaughter. It really is a slaughter. This fucking half-retarded, blind, impotent fucking cuck is just beating the shit out of Mick. This is the only guy that would give me this opportunity. Is that, and that's what I'm saying. And I think he's also the only guy that would give you the opportunity he's giving you. And I think by bitching about it, you're kind of fucking up. So I'm sorry if that's too much advice to give, which, by the way, I didn't give to you. I gave on the show when I was asked about it. 
Maybe I'm taking oh, I'm it too personal. Like, shut I, my I, mouth. I, I, yeah, you are taking it too okay, personal. Well, like, you do, I don't like the way like you speak. Like you I, don't, I, don't like, yeah, I don't like the way you do man, it, man. I've never talked to you like you this have an until right tone. now. No, you have now an underlying I think tone you're an of a cocky arrogance. There it is. I've yeah. never you've talked always about that, you like this Mike. before. You've always thought that, and you've hit it in your words, and all you'll say is like, well, why is he like this? He's a little entitled. Why does he think he's better than John Scram? Wait a minute, because I listen to the show. Okay. My ears were, and I just disagree. That's how with I was you. able I to get that just, opinion. And then finally, Kirk just puts his bitch to bed. I mean, I, how many times do I have to do this? But, I fucking but talked Kirk, but to Kirk. fucking Montante yes, on yes. Sunday and said, "Tell me the fucking podcasters at my fucking level no one, who would talk nobody. to Mike Montante on a fucking phone. <laughs> if I got a fucking fundraiser for you guys to get a job, just because I fucking feel bad. You right. guys suck. I, I just fucking feel bad. Like, I'm, who else is gonna do that? Nobody. I, the I, fucking people I hired, they suck." I just got rid of Augustus. He's a fucking joke. Colony is a retard. <laughs> Steve's a Nazi. Like, I, I, what, what else? Really? Jesus. The world, worst charity of all time. <laughs> I hired a fucking producer. I got rid of the, the microphone. Doesn't even fucking work now. I haven't heard a word Justin said in three days. Right, Justin? That's right. All right. I am fucking so done with this fire bullshit. I am so done with it. Fuck. Alright. Oh. Oh. Jesus Christ. Oh. Alright, so we move on to January 18th. Tim Ridgeld and Jared Carabas were in studio. Tickets for Portland went on sale. There's still some available. Right. Oh my god. Fucking fire, man. What a terrible idea this is. Terrible idea. Waste of my fucking time. Jesus fucking Christ. Stupid fucking fire. Stupid fucking me. Fuck. Fucking ridiculous. Fucking 10 degrees outside. I'm doing this fucking video that no one's gonna fucking watch. So this fucking assholes on the fucking show can just fucking shit on me anyway. Fuck. Oh, I'm just doing, this is a fucking bit. Yeah, this is a bit. It's just me fucking acting. Yeah, I'm one second I'm like a fucking... Academy Award winning actor in the next second, I'm fucking, you know, Stevie Bits. Stupid fucking goddamn stupid. What a mistake this was coming back to do this fucking stupid fucking show. January 18th, we got Tim Ridgels and Jared Carabas in studio. Uh, tickets for Portland go on sale. Fucking smoke again. Fucking blow my goddamn brains out. Let's try this one more time before I fucking scream. January. <coughs> January 18th, we got. Tim Ridgels and who the fuck cares in studio? The fucking guy doesn't even watch the fucking show anyway, so who the fuck cares if Jared Carabas is in fucking studio? Tim Ridgels is cool, Jared Carabas is okay. That's what it is. Fucking tickets to Portland went on sale. They're still available. Get some. And then we get Kirk's final thoughts about fucking Mick, this fucking fire. I'm gonna kick it into next week. This we got some final thoughts about Mick from Kirk and Mike. Fucking God damn it. Just my fight recap. If I had to score it. Yeah, let's say like three rounds. So that's what it kind of felt. I'll handle like. it, Coleman. I'll handle it, Coleman. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll do a one round. I don't know the fuck three rounds. I'm scoring three rounds? What do you felt mean? like three different three rounds. Three rounds. Um, where, where do you score it, Justin? Uh, no bits. Like, where, where, how do you score it? Mike won. Mike, Mike won. won pretty convincingly. I think even. But anytime like, Mike gets loud like that, though, oh, he's a, oh, he, he, he was he was he triggered. Won, he was not even argue. He was definitely triggered. He won, but he also won. I think against. I think anyone could. No, have I mean, yeah, he beat a that. fucking retarded. I don't. Ass. I don't like, think. I don't think Mick's a, ever won a, a fight on on the show. No, his girlfriend fucking beat pretty much the shit out of him. <laughs> Mick's lost in this weird area where Mike, there's like, at there's an advantage the plugola or whatever from coming on here and doing his thing. Oh my God. Tim's so fucking relaxed though, he does. He makes me want to fucking smoke a joint. I need one right now after this fucking debacle. 
Yeah, Jared knows that. Mick yeah. is lost in this area where he's like, he doesn't understand that concept, but at the same time, he thinks he can parlay this into something bigger where Which he can't, a normal yeah. person, what made me sick about that fucking argument with that kid sick was like, isn't it just kind of fun to come in here? I thought and do so. This? Yeah. Like, like imagine like if Bruce Springsteen was like, Hey, just come jam with me. I, I my guys are fucking, they got COVID. I need someone to jam. And then you're like, Oh, fucking Bruce Spring, not comparing you to Bruce. No, I like this comparison. Pause, but like, <laughs> no, I'm fine with that. like yeah. but like imagine having the fucking audacity to be like, Hey, I got to go back there and do the, do the sticks or whatever. And then like sit in here and do this and then just be like, Oh, you, owe me something and you know this is how we're gonna end because i'm done with the show I, i'm done with the smoke inhalation um and it's scary that we're gonna end in the wise words of tim ridgels but he's absolutely right um you know tim tim ridgels is a is a fucking smart man oh my god my eyes are watering so much fucking smoke oh, i don't even know i don't even know what to do right now Oh yeah, that's right. So congratulations to Justin. Um, you know, if anyone, sincerely, congratulations to Justin. If anyone deserved the producer spot, it is him. Um, you know, he works really hard for the show. And, uh, you know, yeah, I'm never fucking doing this again. I am never fucking doing this again. Uh, but he works really hard on the show, um, so he really deserves it. So congratulations to fucking, uh, you know, Barstool Justin. Um, we don't have to go to Chicago to see a fucking puke stream. You know, we got Barstool Justin and fucking, I guess I knew Barstool fucking Boston office. So we can do puke streams now right in Barstool Boston. So congratulations to fucking us. Turn up. She's like CGI. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, it's it's just one long string <laughs> and then like corn contained inside and Fuck you. and you can see the pulsating of the actual rectum there as it comes through. This one's taking a little longer. It's oh, like a slow oh, I just, drip. I just heard that. Slow drip. And uh, there you go. Beauty.